welcome to the WIHS Journal. On the broadcast today, we'll be talking to the author, Peter Scalso, and his book, Cancer and Peace, His 15-Year Journey. And Peter, um, it was great to talk with you before we put on the microphone, just an amazing testimonies of, of God's sovereignty and uh, really it's the Lord's way, not what the man says. So maybe before we talk a little bit about the book, maybe just give a background of yourself for our listeners. Yes, thank you very much for having me on your show today. Uh, I am uh, in my late 50s right now and I have six children and I was an attorney up until about four years ago when I had to stop practicing law because of the cancer at that point. Uh, my cancer journey has been a 15-year uh, time span, and uh, I'll just give a context for it for the listeners. Uh, it's involved 15 surgeries that were more or less major surgeries for me and countless procedures and tests. Uh, I've had six recurrences. I've had uh, radiation, chemo rinses, and now I have four years of immunotherapy infusions every three weeks. But I think uh, as, I, as I wrote this book, what I like to talk about is the distinction is that twice in my cancer journey, Memorial Sloan Kettering, which is one of the major cancer centers in the United States, uh, told my doctor just to send me home and call hospice care. Wow. That was in 2015 and 2017. You know, when you were enduring I believe you said you had a bladder cancer. So when you were actually enduring this cancer and, and going through all the treatments, how did God, um, you know, make himself real to you? I think that's a, that's a really great question and the crux of my book, really. Uh, and just to give a little background, I, my journey didn't become public. I felt that look, the Lord wanted me to be public about my cancer journey from the onset, 2005 Memorial Sloan Kettering. I was having major surgery, and I felt that God spoke to me. But it wasn't until 10 years later when I was asked to speak at an at a area greater Danbury prayer breakfast uh, that I actually came out of the closet, so to speak, about my cancer journey. Um, and I think that what happened was uh, in 2015, my cancer journey became metastatic. Up until that point, I really had surgical solutions uh, for my cancer Recurrences. I had a lot of surgeries, but I had surgical solutions. And in 2015, November 2nd of 2015, that was really a sea change. That was quite a change for how my cancer journey was going to go. And if that's okay, Anissa, I just want to talk a little bit about that because it really answers your, your question. Absolutely. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. So picture 2015, November 2nd, I'm at Lenox Hill Hospital. Uh, down in Manhattan because Sloan Kettering uh, didn't have the surgical expertise to take care of my cancer anymore. It did start in my bladder, uh, but three times my 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 bladder uh, had I basically was taken out. Um, my I have a bladder ureters that are made of intestinal tissue, and three times they they had to be revised, which was major surgery. And on my the third time that it had been revised in 2015, it was my 14th surgery. And I had gone into that surgery, basically uh, prayed over and uh, prophesied over that things would go fine. And uh, the PET scan and the CAT scan and the MRI didn't show that much cancer going on. So I felt confident about it. I had three top urologic surgeons working on me wow. uh, for that surgery. And, when I woke up uh, after a 10-hour surgery in the ICU, my head surgeon came in, and the news was anything but good. Uh, and he basically told me that the cancer was much worse than what they thought. They, there were tumors wrapped around my aorta and in the, in the ureters and all throughout the region there. And he said that I would need a high-powered chemo if we could do that. But, but the insinuation was that I would do an end-of-life process. And here I am with six children, a busy law practice, married, and everything that goes along with that. And I, I want to point out a surrendered Christian. I mean, I've been a Christian since I was 10 years old, a Christian college graduate, Christian law school grad, walk with the Lord, surrendered, 
served, did a lot of service within the church. Uh, and, and here I was faced with this uh, really bleak di- diagnosis. Um, and at that point, I went into what I call the dark night of the soul, which is really a phrase from St. John of the Cross, which is a place you find yourself where you don't see God mm. and you don't, and you feel like God has walked away from you and found myself in a deep depression. I was in a place of despair. I, I would say that the, that the hallmarks of my time were, were abiding fear, anger, and sadness. Um, and I was, I got, I got stuck in that place, but God wanted to just lift me up. And he did that by giving me scriptural truths and by talking to my spirit. And each time I would get a truth, I would weep. I would write it down. I, it was a process of about three weeks. Well, if you're just uh, tuning in right now, I'm speaking uh, to Peter Scalzo and uh, his book, Cancer and Peace, My 15 Year Journey. So now I, I understand that you're five years cancer-free. Um, I have no evidence of cancer right now, even though I still have a lot of procedures and um, immunotherapy infusions. I have an ongoing uh, a journey right now um, with 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 cancer, and uh, like I'll I'll be there Friday getting my infusion. I have a procedure next month, uh, but. I think for me, Anissa, it's, it's how can I find comfort and joy and peace even in the midst of the storm? Yeah. And I love to think about that journey that, that Jesus took with the 12 disciples in that boat across the Sea of Galilee where the storm arose and he went to sleep. And the disciples did everything they could to, to navigate their way and they a lot of them were professional sailors so they knew how to do that but they got to the point where they said we are perishing and they woke up jesus and jesus went to the bow boat calmed everything and looked back and said you know where's your faith or where's your trust and for me that story means i feel many times like i'm the guys in the boat that i'm, I'm trying to do this in my own efforts this this journey and so I try to keep in mind that I want to surrender and trust in Jesus and wake him up. But my storm doesn't cease around me. Uh, my storm still rages. But in the midst of the storm, I think that's the, that's the issue is when we're, when we're still in the storm, can we find comfort and peace? And I think that, that the answer is a resounding yes. Okay. So in you writing this book, what kind of feedback have you gotten from the book? Um, I told my story in under 150 pages. And I told my story because I was at a gala about two years ago and three people came up independently and asked me if they could read my book. And I said, I don't have a book and I don't want a book. And then a pastor came up to me and said, God told me to tell you to write a book. Wow. <laughs> so, so that's when I launched the book project. I'm that kind of a guy where the Lord has to hit me over the head. <laughs> okay. So in, in this 15 year journey, what scripture, what Bible verse really resonated with you and, you know, your suffering? Yeah. So I think definitely I'll just mention a few of them, but uh, obviously I've asked the Lord for healing and I've seen healing. I mean, many times my, my doctors in New York city say he is an anomaly. He should not be alive. I just, past my five-year mark with metastatic cancer, I had a 5% chance to, to, to make it. And so, wow. um, yeah, so they, they don't know, you know, many times they've said, you know, yes, he's getting a response to this particular treatment, but they don't understand, you know, why. I really resonate with Paul when he said that he had a thorn in the flesh and he prayed three times for it to be removed. Mm. And, 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 and God said, no. And, and God said, when you're weak, my strength is perfected in you, and my grace is sufficient. You know, how can listeners find out more about this book or you? Can you give us some uh, contact details? Yeah, they can just go on Amazon, and it's right there. They can read the, the forewords there, the introduction, uh, all that. They can also reach me um, at uh, I have a, a cell phone number because I talk to a lot of people who are in this journey. Yeah. Uh, and it's 203 241 4776. 
Once again, that was the author, Peter Scalso, and his book, Cancer and Peace, with his 15-year journey. For more details, call WIHS at 860-346-1049. The opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily those of the staff or management of a station. I'm Anissa Porticelli for News and Public Affairs.